Hi everyone. I hope all of you are doing good. So in this video, I'm going to tell about few important points during go live. It may be around uh, three, four days before go live or after go live, that around one week to 10 days time. I want to highlight few points. I think uh, few of the points already covered in my SAP methodology video. And um, if you watch the complete video, you would get a good idea that what are the activities we do and what are the sensitive things. Okay. So I want to highlight a few things. It's a short video. What happened once we uh, complete this uh, initial stock upload, right? In the cutover, maybe tomorrow go live means mostly we complete by today or uh, uh, four days before or three days before or uh, the cooling period will be put it. And we call like some off day or one day business will give you that. We are not going to do the operations. Please complete all these activities. So after completion of that one is 561, 562. Most of the companies, okay, as of now, I involved in multiple projects, multiple clients, maybe some 20 plus, you can say. I think uh, almost all companies, uh, 561, 562 related GL, which you assigned in OBYC, right? That will be blocked. So you cannot use 561, 562 anymore. If you really need... Any entry of stock, either we use 202 or we use a physical inventory process to increase that, to decrease the stock. That's what happens. So that's what we need to understand that. Uh, the initial entry of stock after completion, 561, 562 generally won't be available. Uh, if there is any stock adjustment is required, you have to go for a physical inventory process or uh, ignis cost center uh, like that you have to do. Oh, yeah. Of course, we need to get from the proper procurement process. So it's not something like how you are increasing in um, any kind of um, idea system or quality system. You just go there and just increase the stock, right? It's not possible like that in real time system. You cannot do that. The next point is initial stock balance reconciliation. Yeah, there is a process called initial stock. Currently the company is using any other ERP system, any old ERP system, or else uh, they are using certain kind of uh, activities. For example, they were, might be using a normal Microsoft Excel or any kind of auto system. So whatever the balance they are providing to you, this is the total quantity, this is the total amount. After you complete the activity in SAP, you have to do the reconciliation. Either you download the MB52 report and send the business for this is the total quantity and total amount, that should match. So then only the reconciliation process is completed. So like that we we mentioned, okay? So that's the thing we have to understand and what we are going to do it. Okay. So GL level balance reconciliation. Yeah, in the similar way, the GL level also finance will do the GL level uh, reconciliation, whether all are completed or not. So they will verify that how much EGL amount is loaded. So those things also, the reconciliation will be done. First transaction verification and sign off. Uh, so this is like on the day of go live. So on the day of go live, what happens? The first transaction, mostly it will be uh, sales invoice printing because that's a positive, right? Which we are getting as a uh, accounts receivable. Okay, so that kind of a one print will be taken and the sign off like that. All the documents will be uh, printed one purchase order, letter one purchase order, letter one, any one uh, payment related one. So multiple documents will be printed and verified. All the details are good like that. That kind of things will happen. Sign off means it's a formally less verification kind of thing. If there is any checklist that what are the goal of golden transaction and uh, what is the second transaction at what time, what we are going to do that like type of list will be prepared for the go live date. So the checklist will be like, this is completed, this is completed, this has some issue. Yeah, morning 10 o'clock issue, around 3 p.m. it is completed. So like that uh, planned time and actual time, those tracking also will be there. No transmission of open PO and SO data to customers. So this kind of a thing, like for example, no transmission is something like uh, if you are doing any UAT kind of thing. So we have to, uh, that one and also in the go live time the cutover pivots are created right cutover pivot cutover sales order those things already the business knows that uh, sales orders were created sometime back or purchase orders created one month before so again this purchase order they don't transmit so if you have any output type 
either you don't maintain the condition record until the cutover is completed. After that, you can maintain it. If it is triggers also, you have to delete it because the business will get confused. One month before I received the same material, 100 quantity. Again, the company has sent again that one. They might think that that may be the new PO. Okay. So, and also the PO numbering wise also, if possible, try to utilize based on the business requirement, current PO numbering only if you can use it. So the confusion will be avoided. And the numbering also, the last number we can continue so that uh, duplicate PO numbers will not be there from the old system and new system. So once the cutover is completed, uh, then uh, the fresh POs will be created for that. You Anyway, you have to transmit to the vendor uh, for your EDI related uh, ASN, vendor confirmation, those related information. Old material number and vendor material number. So this will play a key role. Uh, even uh, a few of the projects we work like after one, one and a half year also, still they are habitual with old material number. So when you see that uh, people write, um, what they do, they... Uh, they just go to when they set the material, for example, MM03. So he was searching like this. I was asking, like, after one and a half year, two hours, also, you're still doing that. He's a very old uh, user. I said, like, uh, old material numbers. He has been working for some 20 years or 15 years sometime. So he said, like, I'm still remembering the old material number. So he gave the old material number or some order the number, one, two, three, four, star, whatever, like that. And he's, he's getting the material number. So the old material number maintenance in Metal Master will be definitely uh, helpful. So where we have to maintain, I think you know that in the basic uh, data one. Okay. So we have a field called old material number. Here you can maintain so that it will be helpful for business users to search the materials. And similar way for the vendor material number, we have multiple videos also on this uh, vendor material number related one. Okay, so how you are going to maintain, for example, so actually one one. So vendor material number is the uh, unique number for the combination of vendor and material, which is maintained in the purchase info record. Okay, so purchase info record, if you go to the uh, general data, so here we have vendor material number in S4 HANA, the name is like a supplier material number, SCPP, MAT, and OF. So if you maintain this data, uh, it will be helpful during receiving. Even few projects, what I have done, but the while receiving the product label, everything contains supplier material number only. They don't maintain our material number because a vendor is providing materials to thousand customers. Few may have SAP, few may have Oracle, few may have some AW, whatever different different systems they are using. And everyone might have their own numbering, right? So the supplier cannot keep it all those numbers. So they will send the material with supplier material number. So how I, de I have designed uh, when after scanning the material, uh, after scanning the purchase order or inbound delivery, they scan the supplier material number. Based on supplier material number and the vendor in the purchase order, I get the number from the info record okay so either info record and the same thing it is stored in ekpo table also if you check the purchase order also we have the field called uh, vendor material number so let me show you that where it is yeah see here supplier material number is available in uh, purchase order item level also so this is the uh, way how you can uh, you need to maintain if the business is missing also if they don't uh, take that much serious you have to explain that what is the use of old material number and vendor material number so these kind of things you need to take care while uploading the master data and all in case of interfacing with other system reconciliation between system for the data related to material master stock and any other data so the re reconciliation what happens generally we try to send the data but we don't uh, make uh, the confirmation whether it is successful reach to them or not. So APRAC we used to call like uh, APRAC or at least you can for a simple understanding, the status confirmation. So they have to send that unless we received it. And also daily reconciliation. For example, uh, SAP has a thousand quantity and uh, that uh, third party system has thousand or not. That kind of reconciliation also will be helpful to avoid uh, regular operation issues. They have some inconsistency, certain transaction is failed, or there's certain kind of uh, interface issue. So both systems are not having the similar kind of a quantity. 
so that will lead uh, certain issues in the uh, real time okay what exactly happens um, they are not able to plan because they have only 98 quantity but you have 100 quantity so that kind of a thing can be avoided by doing the proper reconciliation either it can be weekly or daily reconciliation or any dashboards where you can see the status of sap total stock and uh, say uh, third party systems or total stock such kind of a things also you can manage and plan for efficient uh, interface system stop all interface during cutover yeah this is uh, something similar to what i mentioned here no transmission so almost similar kind of a thing all uh, stop all interfaces during cutover because you are going to upload many materials and you are going to upload a lot of purchase orders so these interfaces can be uh, avoided to send uh, multiple times okay so any changes and all one time you can send it after completion of the cutover of course after that we are going to activate uh, regular intervals like either five minutes or 15 minutes or one hour whatever interval we are going to keep it that will keep happening that will be keep updating by the system uh, in the regular intervals based on the ongoing operations okay so that's what uh, we need to understand how does how system is going to work and how things will be happening background job creation and relevant variance creation yeah so anyway this is part of the checklist uh, we used to have that in all the configurations are moved or not number ranges are maintained client specific things release strategy related things maintained or not background job creation request is sent or not relevant variants are created or not because if you are asking for a background job you should create a variant and you have to uh, template you have to feel like what is the job name it should be 32 characters max uh, and then what is the program what is the variant how frequent it has to run 15 minutes or one hour or uh, daily ones at what time so all these parameters we have to fill and uh, uh, share with our respective team who is going to create mostly basis creates so they are going to create, but you have to provide all this input because they don't have uh, that information. Roles with popper values. These are all part of cutover. If you watch our videos, we explain in the cutover time. All the roles must be created for the required transaction codes and those roles are assigned to the relevant members. He is a purchasing member. You should have access to PO creation, PO change and uh, PO reports. Okay. And uh, if he's working in inventory management, you should have access to any kind of inventory uh, postings and uh, cancellations, uh, report access, checking the quantities, all this information. So these are the uh, few very important points. And uh, of course, uh, if I consider a few more things also will be added. So if I get some more important points, I felt like let's make it 10. <laughs> so compared to some other uh, 9, 8 or uh, 12, 11 like that, 10. And if I have some more points and if I feel that this will be helpful to all of our uh, YouTube uh, family, LinkedIn, Udemy, so all of our uh, close followers. So I will make one more video to share with you. I'm sure you got some benefit, I believe. So thanks for your time. Keep sharing and keep learning. Have a good day.